Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I know it's two o'clock on the nose right now. I think we're waiting for a couple other folks to arrive. So we're just I'll just wait another minute or so here and uh, then we'll we'll get started very shortly. Thanks so much. All right, well, uh, I think we'll get started here and there, there may be a few more people arrive as we go, but we'll start at least with a bit of an introduction. Um, I uh, want to thank you all again for being here today and thank you as well to Catherine and Mila from Inside Education who have joined us for this webinar as well. Um, we're, we're excited to talk to you about uh, solar PV and schools and the opportunities that, uh, that arise from the, the pairing of those two things. Um, I want to start off though by uh, acknowledge, respectfully acknowledging that we are presenting from Treaty 6 territory in Edmonton and I actually forgot to check if either Mila or Catherine are in Calgary so we may also be presenting from Treaty 7 territory further south. I'm getting the thumbs up so both Treaty 6 and Treaty 7 territory uh, recognizing that, of course that, uh, that all of the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries before us and whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant communities. So uh, a little bit about the MCCAC, the, the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre, who were the main presenters of this webinar today. Uh, and we provide technical assistance, funding edu and education to support municipalities, nonprofits and schools in Alberta in addressing climate change. So we are actually a, a partnership between a number of different organizations, um, the Government of Alberta, Alberta Urban Municipalities Association and the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. So in 2009, those groups came together and formed the MCCAC and we have been uh, going strong for 10 years and, and we're really thrilled to be able to serve Alberta in the programs that we offer. So for today, our offerings uh, are, are going to look a little something like this. We'll start with a bit of a quick overview of solar PV. I'll talk a bit about the Solar for Schools program, including the eligibility and funding uh, that's available. A quick little case study, and then I'm going to pass it off to Mila and Catherine from Inside Education to talk a bit about the benefits of climate and energy education, uh, how to integrate solar PV into classrooms, the inside education programs that are associated with these things, and then we'll open it up to questions. So if you do have questions throughout, uh, please just type them in the chat box that's, uh, that you should have visible in your screen. And if we can get to them right away, we will, and otherwise we'll wait to the question period at the end and we'll get to your questions then. So uh, very, very quickly, a, uh, a quick overview of solar PV for those of you that aren't familiar. Um, solar PV has been around uh, since about the 1950s. Uh, it's it's well-established technology uh, and it's just gotten better and better and cheaper and cheaper as the years have gone on. So now we're seeing it deployed in many more places than we would have even 10 years ago. Uh, it's currently the most widespread and economically viable system uh, or sorry the, the, currently the most widespread and economically viable systems are grid tied uh, so in a way the the solar pv produces electricity it feeds the building the, if it's a micro generation system it feeds the building that it's attached to first any excess electricity goes to the grid and that grid kind of acts like a battery. So in the summer when, especially here, when your system is probably producing more than what you use, any excess goes on to the grid. And then in the winter, when your solar PV array may not be producing quite as much as you use, you're able to pull electricity off the grid. So you get a credit in the summer for the excess electricity you're producing, and then you can use that credit in the winter months when you're not maybe not producing quite as much as you use. So uh, photovoltaics convert energy from the sun, so the sunlight directly into electricity uh, with the with the solar PV modules. And uh, 
they can be mounted on roofs, walls, on the ground. Their solar carports are something that are starting to be more prevalent. So they're they're uh, pretty flexible and scalable and in a number of different places. So why solar PV in Alberta? I know sometimes there's there's questions as to whether it actually works here. We have a cold winter, we have short days. Um, we actually, if you can have, have a look at the map of Canada that's over on the right hand side of your screen there, uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan in particular, this, this map shows the solar irradiance of our country. And so we actually have really good solar resource in, in a good chunk of Alberta and in quite a bit of Canada, especially compared to something like Germany where they're a world leader in solar PV and renewables and we actually have much better solar resource than they do a lot of the time. So um, worldwide more people are currently employed in the solar industry than the coal industry. I know that's kind of a surprise <laughs> considering uh, the Alberta context but um, solar reduces operating expenses when you put it on on a building or or attach it to the grid because it uh, reduces your electricity costs, uh, it reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Right now, Alberta has one of the most emissions intense uh, grid electrical grids in the country. So every little bit of solar PV that's added to our grid here helps reduce those greenhouse gas emissions. And it's it's a fully commercialized technology for small and large scale projects. So uh, just as an example from from a resource perspective, uh, Okotoks actually has greater solar, uh, greater solar energy resource during the months of July through October than Miami, Miami, Florida, despite our northern situation. So it just gives you a bit of a sense of we actually do have incredible resource here. Uh, so we might as well take advantage of it, right? <laughs> um, so the Solar for Schools program specifically is an offering that is available through the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. It's for uh, schools that are public charter francophone or separate within the province and that serve grades K to 12. So um, it can go on new or existing buildings and, or land, but it just has to be owned by the school authority. And then the uh, an educational component has to be completed as part of the project as well. So uh, what we like to see, you know, there's a, a number of different options. We leave it open to the schools and the school authorities exactly what that educational component looks like. But um, most solar PV systems have these great online monitoring systems where you can actually see the real time production of the system. So that's a really great way to integrate it into classroom learning and have some of that hands on experience for students as well. Um, and uh, although the the solar PV is installed on individual schools, the, the school authority itself is actually the, the partner that we work with at the MCCAC to give the funding rebate to. So if you're a teacher at a specific school and you're thinking that this sounds like a great program, you just need to make sure you have that conversation with your school authority as well, because they will need to be involved and, and they're the ones that actually sign the agreement with the Action Centre. So. Right. So funding available. Whoops, sorry, we'll do this. <laughs> I'll do a little first. The, the program does operate on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, it's a rebate program rather than a grant program. So uh, provided that a project is eligible under the program guidelines and we receive a, a complete application and, and a funding agreement is signed, then the project will, will receive a rebate for their project after the project is complete and paid for, as opposed to a grant where often you get the money up front. This is kind of on the back end. Um, so, whoopsies. Oh, there we go. So, as uh, the, the rebate that's available is up to 50% of eligible expenses and we sort of have this sliding scale of per watt rebate. So we, what we do is based on the system size, um, we will calculate the per watt rebate first uh, at depending on the size. So and the, the differences here, you'll see that the smaller systems have a larger per watt rebate than the larger systems, and that's not to penalize smaller systems. It's just to reflect what happens in the market. So the bigger your system gets, typically the, the less expensive it is to install. So that dollar per watt cost goes down. So we just have scaled our rebates to reflect that. Um, so we we calculate that per watt rebate first and then we'll check uh, what the what 50 percent of eligible costs is and and you would get the lower of what of those two calculations.
example, uh, if a school is looking to install rooftop solar, say a 50 kilowatt system, the project cost is $125,000, then they would fit into that $1.25 per watt rebate category. We would, and having a look at what that rebate would look like, it's $1.25 times 50 kilowatts, and that's $62,500. And for this example, as luck would have it, <laughs> uh, that's also the exact same amount that project would receive if they capped it at 50% of system cost. So that would be the rebate for this project. If the project cost was say $120,000, it would hit that 50% cap before it got to that 62,500. So the rebate would be a little bit lower if the project cost was lower. But in this example, the payback period, so how long it takes for the electricity savings to equal the project cost, uh, is reduced uh, to 12 years thanks, or reduced by 12 years to thanks to the Solar for Schools funding. So it cuts the payback period basically in half because we're covering up to 50% of costs. And the education component that's involved, um, this is where we're very glad to have inside education here today because they'll be able to speak to a bit more of this. But um, as I was mentioning earlier, there's there's lots of different opportunities. Uh, hands on learning if you can, if you're able to, you know, get the students up onto the roof so they can actually see the modules or or alternatively mount the modules somewhere. Um, on the school grounds so they're more easily accessible. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for lesson plans to integrate into existing curriculum to learn about energy and uh, climate change and a number of different things. So we have a few, you know, for schools that aren't sure where to start, we have a few resources available on our website as well on the Solar for Schools page. One of them is Inside Education's Climate Change Education Projects. Uh, we also have the People for Energy Environmental Literacy have lesson plans that are freely available to teachers as well. So those things can be integrated into, um, into existing curriculum to cover that educational component. And we'll go through a really quick case study here of Medicine Hat Public School District. So they were one of the first schools to participate in Solar for Schools with the Medicine Hat Christian School. And they installed a 177 kilowatt system. Uh, school administration and executives had been thinking about solar for quite a long time, but the, it, was, it was pretty expensive and they were trying to figure out ways that they could do it. Uh, but they saw it as a cost saving opportunity, which it absolutely is. If you're producing your own electricity automatically, you're reducing your operational costs. So once they heard about the Solar for Schools program with support of our money, they were actually able to move forward with this project. And the school chose a local installer and was actually be able to be, they were they were pretty hands off for most of the project. Once they'd signed that contract with the installer, they basically took care of the rest. So it was not a huge amount of work for the school to install. Um, and oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> their uh, their educational component. So as we mentioned earlier, that there does need to be an educational component. They actually integrated. PV learning into the grade five, six and nine curriculum, exploring the science of the technology itself, as well as the economics of the system. So students can have a look at that portal and see how much electricity they're producing, have a look at the bills, see how much they're using on site and how much they're exporting to the grid and actually do some calculations on, on the economics of the system as it produces as well, which is great. And they also uh, had the installer who did the install come to the school and do some presentations for the students as well. So that's another great resource course, if you're hiring a local installer, they can actually come and often they're they're pretty happy to come and, and talk about the system as well. So um, just to get to get started in these programs, uh, our timeline looks a little bit like this for the program. So have a, we have the guidebook and other resources available on our website on the Solar for Schools page. So we would encourage anyone wanting to participate to have a really thorough look through those things. All of the information about the program is available in the guidebook. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us as well. We're always happy to have a phone chat or, or chat by email and, and answer any of those questions you have. Uh, we would next encourage you to get quotes from multiple installers in your area. Um, there is a directory available through Solar Alberta of all of the install qualified installers in Alberta, so you can have a look there and see who's in your area. Um, and then once you have a few of those quotes and have a sense of what the system might cost you and, and what the ideal system for your location is, 
then you would submit an expression of interest on our website. So that's the EOI. And that's just a really high level look at what you're thinking about, about proposing. It gets you on our radar. And then we have a call with you to confirm that your project that you're thinking about is actually eligible. And we'll give you an estimate of what we think that rebate would look like for you as well. Um, and uh, and then then we would encourage you. Hopefully, you've got those three quotes already. If you don't, at the expression of interest stage, we'll encourage you to do that. And then you select your installer that you want to move forward with, and sign. Have the school authority sign a contract with them to actually install the project. And then you can start submitting an application for the program. So there's a number of different documents that you'll see in the guidebook that need to be submitted with that application. Uh, the solar installers typically are a really big help in, in gathering all that info and sometimes they'll even submit the application on your behalf. So it takes a lot of the work out of it on the school authority and school end. Um, and then uh, we'll have a look if, if everything is there, we'll send off a funding agreement to be signed by the school authority. Once that's signed there and signed at MCCAC, then that locks in that agreed to amount of funding for eight months and that allows you time to actually complete, install and complete the project. And then once it's complete, send in a bunch of completion documents that are also outlined in the guidebook. And if everything's there, then what we do is we then we'll request a check to be cut and, and process the rebate and send it to the school authority to you know basically rebate a 50% of system costs. So that's sort of the, the general process. Um, and then we have a number of resources. I've mentioned a few of these already, but we have a number of resources that are available on our website. Anything from how to choose a solar provider. There's a guide of what questions to ask and things that solar installers should be providing to you when they come out and do a site visit. Um, we if you have to do a request for proposal and actually put the, the, the job out to tender, we've got a checklist of things that you probably want to include in that in a solar RFP. Um, we've got solar PV basics uh, information available in our learning center that's that sort of you know walks you through the very basics of solar PV. Um, things that are a bit more specific to municipalities about permitting and taxes and how to make your municipality more solar friendly. Uh, and then we also have the Alberta Solar Calculator, so it actually lets you put in a bunch of inputs about what kind of system you're looking at, and then it'll it'll spit out, you know, how much electricity you can maybe expect to produce from that system and what your savings could be. We worked with Lakeland College on that a few years ago to develop, so that's a pretty handy tool as well. Um, so those are all of the things that are available if you head to our website. And now I'm going to hand it off to Catherine and Mila to uh, to chat to us a little bit about Inside Education and and uh, solar PV and climate. And I think we'll just, we should be able to just pass it over here, hopefully. <laughs> Did that work? Can we? I think that, not quite. I'm still seeing our slides. Oh, my video is gone. Now it's back. <laughs> Joys of being in two different places in technology. We should be able to get the transition here fairly shortly. Here, you know what? Maybe I'll stop sharing and we'll see if that helps. Now it's just going to be a big version of me, but. Mm. Pretty sure. There, Catherine, I'm going to at least say, oh, yeah, there you go. All right. And I'll get your video up here so that it's. There we go. I think you're ready to go. OK, perfect. And uh, I'm assuming everybody can can hear me OK as well. Uh, we're really excited to to be joined uh, or be invited by by Stephanie and the Municipal Climate Change Action Center to to share with you how we can let the sun shine in for schools across Alberta. So so thank you, Stephanie, for that. Um, Sorry, trying to get my slide to go forward. I'm gonna have to do it this way. There we go. Um, as a little bit of a presentation outline, we'll talk a little bit about inside education, not a ton. Um, but if you do have more questions, our, our website was there at the beginning and um, you're welcome to, to reach out to me and, and Mila. We're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of energy and climate education and also how um, we support schools and, and other ideas for supporting schools and in incorporating energy and climate and solar education projects. 
So um, a little bit about me. My name is Catherine, obviously, and I'm the, the program director for Inside Education. I'm a teacher by training, so that's actually my background, but now I call myself the cool aunt of teaching. So I have all the fun with uh, without all the, the startup stuff that, that you teachers and, and admin are doing right now. Um, no report cards, no parent-teacher interviews. So cool aunt of teaching. I've been with Inside Education for 14 years now. And um, honestly, if you haven't checked out Inside Education, I feel very privileged to, to have that for the last 14 years. Um, I'll, I'll let Mila introduce herself in a moment, but uh, she'll be sharing some of our, our A Plus for Energy projects with you. Um, so whether or not you're considering installing a solar array on your school, we really hope to give you some meaningful ideas and um, you know some enthusiasm to, to at least explore energy and climate with your students. So. So here we go. A little bit about Inside Education first. So we are an Alberta-based uh, charity. We've been operating in the province since 1985, so we're, we're 35 years young. Um, and we focus solely on K-12 education. So I'm a teacher by training, but our team is made up of, of teachers as well as uh, folks that have joined us from other other paths in life and um, but we only work with k-12 schools so everything we do is curriculum connected we have this broad goal of supporting teachers and inspiring students and we do that using kind of the the four pillars that are are outlined below so Thinking about multiple perspectives, anytime we approach environmental and natural resource topics, which is um, you know, the, the focus of our organization, we do so with, with the lens to multiple perspectives. So involving um, academia and government and industry and non-government organizations, First Nations in um, our program content, but also they represent our board of directors as well. We believe that firsthand experiences are invaluable. So if we can get people, um, especially students and teachers involved, um, this is where the magic happens. So this is where we'll ignite that, that passion, that, um, that sense of responsibility and stewardship for our natural resource topics. Um, so, you know, things like standing underneath a wind turbine or, or touching a solar panel or having that that connection um, to foster, um, you know, the next thing, which is the critical thinking piece. So we believe that um, we need to think critically about the, the topics and, and issues in the province of Alberta and not just be critics of that. So we always challenge participants, students and teachers to not just think about um, uh, or to think about what they're for, not just what they're against. So instead of being a critic, be a critical thinker. And then we also believe in accessible programs. So our programs are available at no cost. Um, across Alberta and we have five different program areas and they're listed at the bottom of the slide there. So we have a full suite of learning resources and you can just go to our website and click away, download um, anything you want there. And we have made a whole bunch of uh, resources for online learning, especially for, for this year. So you can check out our learning resources. We also have classroom and field programs. So we have a team of educators that in the past would travel around uh, Alberta. We hope to do that again. In the meantime, we're doing virtual programs. Um, again, no cost. We have teacher professional development programs, um, using that that train the trainer approach and uh, youth education summits where high schools from across Alberta will come together for kind of an, an in-depth look at a topic and then we also have uh, grants and special projects which Mila will tell us about in a second so uh, that's a little overview of of inside education and uh, I think I'll I'll turn it over to Mila now to tell us a little bit 
about uh, A plus for energy and some of the benefits of energy and climate education. Thank you, Catherine. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Mila. I'm a bit newer to inside education than Catherine is. I started just back in February, right before the world changed. Um, I started as an education program coordinator for Inside Education, but I like to say that my journey and involvement with Inside Ed started a lot sooner. So that photo that you saw of me at the beginning, holding up a solar panel where I still had braces on my teeth, that was grade 11 me, so almost 10 years ago when I was participating in one of our youth um, education summits. It was called Generate out in Kananaskis, and it was really a transformative experience for me back then. So at Inside Ed, we believe really strongly in the importance of natural resources, energy, and climate education, just as Catherine said. And one of the ways that we've been able to support students' solar projects in particular is through our A Plus for Energy program. So I'm going to work my way through some different A Plus for Energy projects in a bit here to give you some concrete examples of how schools are implementing renewable energy, in particular solar energy education. So first of all, a bit of an overview of A Plus for Energy. Um, A Plus for Energy was initiated by BP Canada and Inside Education has been involved from the beginning and we took over um, basically coordinating the entire grant program just three years ago from BP, but we've been involved for a lot longer than that, for about 13 years actually. So A Plus for Energy is a grant program, so we give out $5,000 grants to typically around 25 schools across Alberta every single year. So that means that over the last 13 years, um, about 450 projects at schools have been supported by A Plus for Energy. So like I mentioned before, I'm gonna use some examples of A Plus for Energy projects to highlight the benefits of doing hands-on renewable energy education in schools, in particular about solar energy. So this first one that we're looking at comes from St. Paul School, and it really demonstrates how renewable energy education can empower students to apply their knowledge of energy and electricity generation in an impactful way. So basically, they didn't just put a solar panel on a school and say, hey, some of our electricity comes from solar. They're actually investigating uh, competing and built this whole project around their solar panel. So what they're doing at St. Paul School is they actually all have all of the students charging their phones um, using electricity that comes from their solar panel and they're competing to see which class um, can have the most kilowatt hours recorded from solar electricity. And they've also incorporated this whole social media campaign around it called Energy Vampires, where they challenge students to post photos onto social media of them unplugging energy vampires, so things like a microwave that doesn't need to plug, be plugged in at the time. So that is an example from St. Paul School. And we're going to turn next to Bev Facey School in Sherwood Park. So I think that their project exemplifies how um, solar energy education can provide students with the opportunity to explore the costs and benefits of various energy sources and share their ideas throughout project development. So Bev Facey used their grant to purchase a wind turbine, two large, so two large solar panels, demo models for hydrogen fuel cells, and a variety of other materials as well. And they had the students investigate all of these different renewable energy sources and figure out which they thought were the most feasible and had the most benefits versus the most challenges. They also had um, a campaign called Flick Off be part of the solution, which gained a lot of traction, just encouraging people to turn off the lights and save electricity in small ways whenever they could around the school. So they really maximized student engagement and really had students investigating and figuring out the positives and negatives or opportunities and challenges of multiple different renewable energy sources through this project. Okay, the next one we're gonna turn to, um, the next one we're turning to, it really shows how these renewable education projects can inspire students to realize their potential academic and career paths in renewable energy research, development, and installation. 
So I wanted to show this one, which comes from Wabamum Wab School, um, because it was really practical. What they did is they studied a student's family farm to actually determine the feasibility of converting it into a solar farm. They built a solar car model. They had a presentation from a local, local expert, a local solar energy installer about solar energy. They toured a net zero home and like you see, can see in one of those photos, they also built all these small model houses and actually wired them with LED lights, fans and doorbells. Um, so basically their project taught them a lot about the industry within solar energy and was really practical. It was super hands on and I think the students at this school definitely would have gained um, some knowledge into the type of career paths that could could come with solar or other types of renewable energy as well. There's one more project I'll show you and this is one that shows how renewable energy education brings valuable lessons of responsible consumerism, engaged citizenship and informed decision making to the entire school community and I wanted to show this one in particular because this was actually a grade three, four class. So this solar energy education doesn't just have to be for, um, you know, high schoolers that are already thinking about careers like in that last example. It can start from a really young age. This project took place at Capitol Hill School in Calgary and the grade three, four class brought in um, a parent who was had some expertise and helped them design and construct an irrigation system for their indigenous plant and food garden. And they talked all about how water consumption connects to energy use and renewable energy as well. Um, I also attended the Capital School Energy Fair where they had all their grade three, four students build models of different renewable energy projects. So I saw them build um, a hydro dam, I saw um, their wind turbines they'd built, they'd even built a little solar, a solar farm model as well. And throughout this whole project, these grade three, four students compiled all of their learnings, their drawings, their pictures, and they actually ended up with a storybook called The Story of Water, A Tale of Conservation. So it can start at a young age, but through, I think, all of these examples, we can see some of the awesome benefits that um, solar energy or renewable energy education can have on students and teachers and our whole communities. So with that, I'm going to turn things back to Catherine. Thanks so much, Mila. Um, as you can probably uh, gather, Inside Education is a huge champion for project-based learning and uh, there's a ton of potential that can happen as soon as we, we start engaging students in, in lessons like um, the, the four examples and a, lot, and a lot of benefits of using solar education to help us help us do that. Um, so the next little bit we'll talk about how we at Inside Education as, as well as some of our, our partners um, and friends in, in the energy education space can help support your solar education project um, even beyond the panels. We definitely can support uh, that part as well but uh, so whether or not you go down the road of, of installing there are tons of ways to bring energy education to life in your school. Um, and I think Stephanie mentioned this at the beginning. Um, the, the spoiler alert for this section is if you do get panels, uh, we want to help you use them for education and, and not just put them on the uh, on the roof of the school where the kids can't get them so or can't interact with them. So uh, this is always step one for for us at Inside Education when it comes to um, uh, energy education project of, of any kind, and that is to generate lots of interest and excitement um, in the school community about, um, about what you're doing. And so the photo on the, the left there, that's a, a bunch of students checking out a solar car at the U of C and just asking a ton of questions, getting really excited about this, this cool technology. The photo on the right is maybe the my favorite photo I've, I've ever seen from Inside Education, we're teaching about uh, the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy. And I just put it there because this is how much fun uh, folks can have learning uh, about the topic. 
And as soon as you have that, that excitement and enthusiasm, then you can really gain momentum on some of these these energy education projects. So if showcasing innovation like and technology like the solar car um, will really build that readiness to learn and will also help you get a lot of people involved. Uh, you know, Stephanie walked through the steps of, of getting a solar project done and you'll need admin and the school board and parents and teachers. And the more folks you get interested and excited in it, um, the, the better luck you'll have and and you can have a ton of fun while you do it as well. Um, the next bit would be developing understanding about uh, the topic and I think there's this this thought that teachers are experts on all things and uh, even now I, I'm still learning a ton about solar and I've had the chance to attend lots of inside education professional development programs talk to experts um, and there's always so much more you can learn because the, the energy landscape is constantly changing in the province of Alberta. And so um, Inside Education likes to offer these opportunities to develop understanding in both students and teachers. So a photo there, those are our students touring the NATE um, energy program and, and checking out solar. We've toured some passive houses and, and net zero homes. Here's a teacher getting up close and personal with a, a solar panel. So make sure that that, um, that knowledge of, of what is solar, what does it mean for the province, uh, demonstrated from multiple perspectives, and, uh, and we can help you do that through our teacher professional development programs and our youth summit programs, which again are available at, at no cost. Um, and you know, just gain a, a ton of depth and breadth of understanding about, about solar and other energy topics all for free. Um, another thing that we focus on at Inside Education is uh, building networks and partnerships. Um, so teachers, you know, we provide them the opportunity through our teacher professional development and programs like A plus to connect with each other. So um, here's a photo of of two champion teachers, uh, Amanda and Julie. If you were on Twitter, you may have seen them chatting. Um, teachers from different schools, but are now working collaboratively on on projects related to energy and climate and uh, and uh, those networks and partnerships are really important for, for a successful project. The middle photo there is, is uh, a group of teachers touring Cochrane High's solar installation project, asking questions about, you know, what, what worked for you, what didn't, how did you communicate that in your school? And Inside Education really values allowing that opportunity to happen. Um, and beyond the schools, I think it's really important to connect with industry partners, um, folks in, you know, at the universities, those folks will really help bring a project to life. And I know it can be a little nerve wracking sending that email out into to cyberspace, help, we're, we're considering this. Um, from my experience, People are, are generally so enthusiastic to help out schools when it's for the benefit of, of students and education. Um, a quick email and ask and you never know where it might take you. So um, the other thing I'll mention here is some of these schools with the these big solar projects, they have to, to do some fundraising and get some other grants to help kickstart it. Um, the Municipal Climate Change Action, Action Center, you know, with their, their offsets, that is certainly a huge step. But there's um, a lot of grants out there that can also be used towards solar projects. So A Plus for Energy being one of them through us, but Alberta Ecotrust has a grant, TD Friends of the Environment. So if you're interested, um, I do have a, a, a list of those kind of grant projects that can be used for that. Uh, the next bit would be to stock up your school with resources to teach about energy. So now you have this enthusiastic community, we're ready to go. Um, so 
whatever you can bring into the school to to help supplement that learning will be highly valuable. So on the left hand side of the screen, those would be inside education resources. We have uh, we call it the care package. So it's a, an energy efficiency and conservation toolkit and teacher's guide. We have an electricity poster and teacher's guide as well as a stewardship poster and teacher's guide. Again, all for available for free digitally on our website, but um, if and when in person teachers conventions happen, we do distribute them hard copy there as well as on our teacher professional development programs. I also thought it was important to mention a few um, other resources that are really valuable uh, for the school. So there's a few there, Green Energy Futures, um, a, a great place for videos. The Design Our Climate Simulator is through King's College and you can actually, you know, move some of the buttons around and, and have students interact with a, a big simulation on climate change. Energy Minute is another one. The Energy Systems uh, Lab at the U of A has some great resources as well. So the take home message there is that the, the resources available for uh, teachers and student and to support student learning. There's there's a lot out there. We're very lucky in the province of Alberta and um, so do access those things. Most of them uh, inside education stuff for sure, all available at no cost. Um, all right, this is the fun stuff. So the tech tools and toys. Um, great way to, to generate that excitement and enthusiasm again. Um, Stephanie mentioned the visual monitors. So when you, if you do get a solar array on top of your school, make sure you get one of those to bring that learning to life. But there's also some really neat stuff that um, will help support solar education uh, on the ground. So I have some energy meters there, solar cars, solar lanterns, there's energy audit kits and energy meters. And I just learned yesterday about something called flywheel cars that uh, demonstrate battery storage. So really neat tech tools and toys that can help you incorporate solar education into the classroom and, and support a solar education project. Um, and lastly, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about our student programs. So Inside Education and others as well have programs that can come into your school, whether right now virtually, but um, hopefully in person uh, in, the, in the future. And uh, we can work directly with students. So whether that looks like a kind of one hour presentation or uh, lots of our programs actually focus on project development with students. So why not get students involved from the get-go on some of these uh, solar projects and have them involved in the initial planning and placement and even the build if you get that far. So um, I just thought I'd mention our classroom programs as well as youth uh, energy and climate leadership summits that, that are ongoing throughout the year and available to schools at no cost across Alberta. So that's a little bit about how we can support uh, energy and climate education in schools across Alberta. And here are my big three take home messages. So if nothing else, there are a ton of ways to incorporate energy and climate ed education in your school. Inside Education can and will absolutely help you do that. And if you do get a solar array, don't just put it on the roof, use it to generate some meaningful energy education experiences for your students. So, so thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to, to answer any questions you might have about inside education or programs or, or other examples we might know of. So uh, with that, I'll just turn it back over to, to Stephanie. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Sorry, I'm just uh, battling with. Uh, there we go. I think I'm just about to get my video up here. Try that. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine and Mila, to both of you for that amazing presentation. It's uh, it's always so excellent to have experts in, in the education field. Uh, 
at the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, you know, we focus on funding and technical expertise and and a number of other things, but education is is not one of the things, at least not for schools, that that is one of our areas of expertise. And we're so appreciative of organizations like Inside Education that are doing this day in and day out. And they there's so many great examples there of integrating energy and climate education into the classroom. So thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to uh, sort of tack on a little bit of information as well. I know some some grant programs and rebate programs, they have limitations on whether or not you can stack your grant with other other pieces of funding. And just to confirm that the, the Solar for Schools uh, rebate funding, if you do go that route, um, it can be stacked with any other funding that you can find. So the 50% that we don't cover can be helped with a grant from, from Inside Education or any of the, the other funding sources that Catherine mentioned as well. Um, so we, we encourage people to go out and look for that other funding in addition to ours. Uh, and I'm very excited uh, to share. Uh, we're just about to sign the funding agreement for a new project that's actually going to be supported by both uh, the A plus for energy program and solar for schools. Uh, the uh, Lacombe High School is about to put up a really excellent animal husbandry sea can <laughs> that has a whole green roof on it and a, a solar array on the front of it that will power the entire facility. So. Um, both A plus for education and solar for schools got to finally <laughs> have have a project that's being supported by both of us. I'm really excited to see that one go in. So it should be up and running. I think by the end of September is what they're hoping. So it's uh, it's a really really exciting project. Um, they have an amazing EcoVision Club down there that is doing some incredible work with their students as well. So. Uh, again, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to zip forward here and just do a couple of little bits and pieces about MCCAC programs and services so you know you have a bit of context about what else we do. So I mentioned earlier that we have uh, programs available for municipalities and not-for-profits as well. So we have our electric vehicles from municipalities program. We have a recreation energy conservation program. Both of those are rebate programs to help municipalities reduce their energy use in their recreation centers and uh, purchase electric vehicles or electric, electric ice resurfacers, uh, garbage trucks, those kinds of things. Uh, we have a municipal energy manager program that helps fund the salary of an energy manager within a municipality to have a look at all of the energy use and then make suggestions as to how they can start reducing that use and save money at the same time. Um, we have the Alberta Municipal Solar Program, program, which is very similar to the Solar for Schools program, but specific to municipal buildings. And then we've got a couple of advisory services as well that are not rebate programs but offer assistance to municipalities. The Partners for P Climate Protection Program that's in partnership with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities that helps uh, municipalities set up a climate action plan and then the Municipal Energy Champions Program which is for small municipalities that maybe don't quite have the capacity to have a full energy manager but they can access support from one of the experts at the Action Centre to help them start the process of identifying uh, their energy use and then and uh, implement our uh, measures that they can take to start reducing that energy use as well. So that's kind of the things that we have on offer right now. Um, and then I think we're we're at the end and we'll take any questions you have. I also realized that I was a terrible host and forgot to properly introduce myself at the beginning. So I'll do it right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm Stephanie Ripley. I'm the project coordinator on the renewables team at the Action Center. So uh, I help administer the Solar for Schools program and the Alberta Municipal Solar program. And we have a couple of community generation programs as well that aren't open for applications anymore, but they're sort of carrying on in the background. So I help administer those as well. Are there any questions? All right, we did. We do have one that says, how do we get that list of grants? <laughs> so I believe I'll let Catherine confirm, but I believe it's available on the Inside Education website and we have a link to it on, our, on the Solar for Schools page as well, but I'll let her answer that more fully or Mila, either one of them. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, yeah, there's I can definitely provide it as a, a resource after. I'm not sure if there's like a an easy spot on our website to find other grants. That would be that would be good. But uh, perhaps the best way would be to email me and I'll put my email in the chat box. Perfect. Thanks, Catherine. Any other questions out there? 
don't see any that have come in at the moment, but if you've got any, uh, we'll wait a couple of minutes here. Uh, also feel free to, to reach out to uh, either Catherine or Mila if you have inside education specific questions or to myself at the Action Centre. I'll throw my email in the chat box as well. Um, if you have any questions about the Solar for Schools program, I'm we're always happy to answer those things as well. All right. And there's Catherine's email, which is great. So I think I don't see any new questions coming in. I think if that's if that sounds seems like it might be the end of it. Uh, thank you all again for for attending today. Uh, we hope that this has inspired you to run out and, and start thinking about climate and solar education for uh, for your schools. And uh, I thank you again to Catherine and Mila from Inside Education for joining us and, and providing that really excellent information on, uh, on all of the amazing things that are possible in, within the curriculum in Alberta schools for climate and, and energy education. All right, I think we'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you.